Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Mike McCarville, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at various primers that we have as options when we are uh, treating resin. So, um, a lot of this starts out from a kit that we're in the process of uh, putting together. This is a kit that we produced in an earlier video. You can take a look at the basic construction, but it's primarily a resin kit. Now, in the instructions, I know that uh, Bill Banta has talked about how difficult it is to paint resin a lot of times. Sometimes the uh, resin just uh, flakes off and you have to touch it up frequently. Uh, it has difficulty sticking and that type of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to test primers on this material. So what we've done is we put this together and uh, it's got a very thick um, resin base. So we have some surfaces that we can test on and we don't even need to really um, have these surfaces that uh, we show, but um, we can also do interior walls before we start painting the detail because we don't really want to cover up all the fine brickwork that's on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these um, primers. Now this by all means is not an exhaustive list of primers that are available. There's lots and lots of primers out there. I just wanted a comprehensive group so we can kind of have some sort of comparison. So uh, the first one on here is uh, Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer. Now I've used this quite a bit on uh, corrugated metal uh, for roofing and it comes out really well as a base color. Um, we're going to go ahead and test this. This is made for of uh, metal and fiberglass and it's got kind of a rust red color tint so we're going to test that that's our first one uh, our next one is a Tamiya product fine surface primer uh, this is made for um, plastic and metal and it comes out in a very light gray so we'll test that and I got a little helper <laughs> and uh, kittens are very curious uh, this is a Vallejo Hobby Paint. This is a uh, this is a uh, black primer color uh, for metal and plastic. Again, you know they basically say it's pretty much good for anything. So three basic primers. We're gonna try the Rust-Oleum, the Tamiya, and the Vallejo. And uh, I've used a lot of these in the past, so I kind of know what to expect. But uh, again, this is resin, so. Uh, and then this isn't something new to me. This is AK Interactive's uh, Fine Resin Primer. So it's actually made for resin. So I'm really curious to see how this one stacks up against the other three. Um, and like I said, a couple of, uh, you know, um, uh, basics as far as this. You want to make sure that the, the resin that you have has been washed. Uh, put it in not hot but warm water. Uh, wash it with uh, Dawn. <laughs> All right, you're out of here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cut. Um, so you want to make sure that you cover this, uh, th that you uh, wash this with uh, Dawn, and you want to make sure that you get any of the mold release uh, material that's on the outside of this. Um, wash it, uh, scrub it with an old toothbrush. Um, uh, and then rinse it really well, let it completely air dry. So I did all that yesterday, so I don't have to worry about any water, even though here everything evaporates pretty fast. Um, when you spray these, you want to make sure it's in a well-ventilated area, but you also want to make sure that the cans are not really, really cold, um, because that will cause problems. Shake them up for a good minute, maybe two, just to make sure that you don't have any problems with the nozzles. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, these are these can be a little bit more uh, troublesome to paint with. Um, but again, always good to uh, do it when the humidity isn't uh, extremely high um, and uh, make sure that you uh, get a good temperature. Don't paint when it's really, really cold. Uh, if you have to go out in the garage and it's cold, heat up, heat up that space beforehand. Um, that type of thing. So really kind of basics, but sometimes if you don't think of it or you haven't experienced that, then maybe it's helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paint this, and I'm probably going to choose some interior walls, but I'm definitely going to choose the base, and I want to paint um, each of the primers 
in a section so I can compare how they look and then how they uh, they perform. Um, I painted the interior, uh, the wood flooring, and I can scratch this off with my finger. Now I'm not gonna detail the interior, I just wanted to kind of show that this is what's gonna happen if you don't um, uh, put some sort of uh, uh, material on here so that you can prep the base of the resin. Um, also, when I painted this, um, I did not clean this either because I wanted to show exactly what's going to happen if you don't clean it. So you're going to be constantly touching up the brickwork and then the uh, the gray stone foundation and the red brickwork. If you uh, have to move your building around, so you take it to shows or you decide you're going to move it to another location, you're constantly going to be picking this thing up. Um, then it's going to be a big problem. Um, if it's going to stay static somewhere where you paint it and you set it down and you're done, you never pick it up again, it's probably not a big deal. So sometimes you'll get areas where the paint sticks really well. Other times you're going to have this happen. So we don't want this to happen. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and paint uh, four sections and then we'll come back and we'll give it the, uh, the old scratch test. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's take a look at what we've got. So again, the Rust-Oleum here, the Tamiya gray here, uh, the Vallejo black primer here, and then the AK Interactive uh, gray uh, primer actually for resin. So um, I was already playing with this a little bit and I can tell you that right out of the gates, the Rust-Oleum comes off with my finger. Now I like the color, but man, it does not take much pressure to get that to chip off. Not good. So uh, you, you like this color and you want to stay with it, that's fine, but you are going to be touching this up. So keep some uh, spare on hand. Um, now granted, this is also on a smooth section. It's not textured like the, uh, the stonework. But that said, um, there is going to be high areas that you're always going to be touching up. So the red, um, I have used this paint a lot. Uh, like I said, I've used it for rust. Not really uh, good for uh, resin prep. So moving on to the Tamiya. Now, this is really made for styrene, plastic and metal, but like styrene, uh, think uh, 135th scale tanks, aircraft, things like that. Um, on styrene, it's probably great, but on uh, the resin material that we have. So I can, I can definitely get it to scrape off right here. Um, I have to go at it a little bit more than the Rust-Oleum, so it's better, but it's still not great. Um, I anticipate a lot of, a lot of um, touch-up and uh, that type of thing if you're going to use that. So moving on to the Vallejo, and I have kind of played around with each of these at first just to see, to get a feel. Um, I can get this to scrape off, but I have to scratch a lot more aggressively than what I was doing. And I'm mostly taking off the matte finish in the corner here, right there. Um, I'm not really getting a lot of paint to come off. Now, I got to say, I was not really expecting the Vallejo to perform a lot better than the Rust-Oleum and the, uh, the Tamiya. I kind of thought those two might be a little more um, substantial. But the Vallejo is not bad. I would Now, again, if you're going to spray paint, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like going at it harder and harder and harder. That's, that's, that's a pretty good primer. So um, I'll, I'm really just taking off the, uh, the matte finish. That's really all I'm doing there on that one. You can kind of see it there. Not really, but um, I've gotten almost no paint off on that. So um, now if you wanted to paint a darker um, subject, uh, this is a good black to use under that. And then you're going to be able to get either, you know, um, uh, darker details and shading and that type of stuff 
with the primer and then go over it with a paint but we're just looking for something that adheres at this point and that's not bad and then the final one is the AK interactive fine resin primer this is made for um, primer my only complaint on this one probably is it's the smallest can so it's uh, I'm not sure if I can figure out real quick what this is it is a four ounce can so the next thing up is the Tamiya which weighs about twice as much and this one is a unknown size <laughs> so um, I could probably Google it real quick if I wanted to oh it's a uh, hundred and eighty um, milliliters whatever that comes out to be so you guys can convert that if you want to um, but so this is definitely the smallest can um, also it's a lacquer so um, when I applied it this is actually two coats because the first one got a little wavy I think I put on just a little bit too thick um, so this one's a thicker coat so you have to take that into consideration um, but this is a lot like the Vallejo um i'm not really even making a dent on this at all matter of fact i'm not even scratching off the matte finish and i'm kind of going at this pretty good just because i want to know that when i put this on that i'm not going to have any issues uh we're going to take an exacto blade to these two now the Vallejo black and the AK Interactive gray. And let's just see what kind of damage I can do. I mean, you're never going to be doing this if you're just handling these kits. But. So, you know, as expected, aggressively going at it on these two. I know the gray is really hard to see, but uh, it looks just like the black. So once that's carved and I get the black open, I can't I can't expand the black once I'm through the black surface. Really, the same thing with the uh, AK Interactive, um, the resin primer. So. I would be comfortable using either of these two colors on resin. I would avoid Rust-Oleum completely. Um, the Tamiya, I would hang on to this. I'd use Rust-Oleum for maybe metal that you're not going to handle for corrugated or uh, if there's a paper material or wood um, corrugated or something that you want that you know that um, the primer is going to soak into. That would be fine. Uh, Tamiya. I'm keeping this for my my uh, my tank kits. Um, I'll be using this extensively for a primer for that. But again, after you wash it, um, the Vallejo, this is right up there with the AK Interactive. This stuff is tough. So I may have to get some more of this and use this on maybe some of the darker subjects. Um, and the AK Interactive, this, this kit is probably going to get completely coated with this. Now, it might be a little more pricey. Because this thing is going to, um, the, the kit's going to chew up, you know, a bunch of this. I would say I, if I can get two of these buildings painted with this, that would be good. But again, you don't have to hit it with a layer so thick that you're going to lose the details. You're ma mainly looking for an undercoating so that the next layer of paint is going to adhere well. That would be what this is. Uh, the black too. So instead of four ounces uh this vallejo can is 9.37 ounces so over half over twice as much as this size can um and you can see i mean you know this can's huge um but i'd be okay with either one of these matter of fact i'll probably be adding both of these as primer going forward just in general this would be great primer on most surfaces and again, we haven't tested on plastic or anything, um, but this is made for resin. So this is probably going to be my go-to. Now, keep in mind, we're doing this kit, this kit, 
And uh, we've got a roundhouse coming up, which is going to have uh, even a uh, larger number of walls. But, you know, to get this uh, base piece covered in a gray primer and to get this upper piece to get covered in a gray primer. And then so you this will end up gray uh, stonework, um, maybe a, a little bit lighter. And then this is all going to be a brick red color um, to get a good underlying coat so that the follow on coats um, stick really well. That's really what this whole um, exercise is about. So um, I would give Rust-Oleum a D. I would give Tamiya a D plus because I could still scratch it off pretty easily, but um, it's not really made for resin. Um, now on plastic, maybe a different story. Vallejo, I'd give Vallejo probably a B plus or A minus. Um, and I would give the AK Interactive probably an A minus to an A. Um, I could get a little bit of um, scratching off with the matte finish on this, um, but this one I didn't really even seem to be able to do that. So slightly better for resin. Probably only use this on resin. Almost as good, but this I think is probably a little bit more universal. Uh, and uh, metal and plastic is what this is made for. So this would be my metal and plastic resin. This would be my, um, or I'm sorry, this would be my metal and plastic resin um, primer. <laughs> That's what I mean to say. And the AK Interactive would be my go-to for uh, resin exclusively. So those are probably going to be the resins, uh, the, um, the primers for metal, plastic, and then resin going forward. Probably won't even touch these other ones. Um, now maybe styrene for this guy. Um, and I still like the color of this for a base color for rust. But again, that's not the what we're looking at today. We're not looking at rust. And we're not really looking at styrene tanks. So those two are off the list. Uh, and those are our weapons of choice. So hope you guys appreciate this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to add those below. Check the notes. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. And... Um, Stay good. See you guys. <laughs>